All right, our model is UV unwrapped and we are ready to bake out a normal map. So this is the common workflow you'll go through in order to get a retopology mesh and all the details from your high resolution mesh into other software applications. So once we have our retopology object, if you have multiple objects here, you just want to select the one you want to work with. I only have one, so that's not an issue. But I'll go up here. If I'm in the retopo room, I go up to bake and bake with normal map per pixel. All right, so here's how this works. It may look like my model disappeared, but it didn't. It was only contracted along its normals. Here's what that means. What 3D code is going to do is it's going to project all the vertices outward and it's going to project them inward to try and capture all of the details that are on your high resolution mesh that don't line up with the retopology mesh. For, in practical terms that means that when you use these options show outer shell and preview inner shell when you're showing the outer shell you want to make sure that no part of the high resolution mesh is protruding farther than the retopology mesh and when you preview the inner shell you want to make sure that you can't see any part of the retopology mesh. That means it's completely encased inside your high resolution mesh. Now in this case the uh, numbers I have here I believe these will default to 10 and 10 each. Higher numbers will just project the mesh farther so if I change this to say 8 on the outer shell you'll see the mesh goes out even farther but I don't need that. Now in some cases again although it's not the case on this mesh in some cases you may want certain areas of the mesh to project farther or not as much as other parts of the mesh. So to change this you can use a sphere of influence. And the way this works is if you hit add zone it'll add this little sphere usually on a random point along the mesh. If you go to pick zone I can pick a region where I want this sphere of influence to be. So I'll pick right here for instance. You can change the size so I'll make this pretty large so you can see what's happening like 35 and then you can set an in and out depth for that region specifically. So I make the out depth 8 and hopefully you can see that in that one region the mesh is being projected outward with a depth of 8 whereas the rest of the object is being projected outward with a depth of 4. If I preview the inner shell and I set this in depth to say 1 then you see we can see parts of the mesh. Now obviously we don't want to do that so I'm just going to change this to say 3 to match up with the rest of the model. But you can add these zones in order to fine tune how far out the mesh is projected along your object. And you can add as many of these as you want. Now I don't really need this one but I'm just going to leave it in there anyway. And once you hit OK, it'll ask you to do something called bake local occlusion. What that does is it's just going to look at the convexity of your high resolution object and bake that into a texture. Now I usually keep this off but just for this purpose I'll keep it on and the ray casting length just determines how large the how large of the convexity is it looking for. Higher numbers will mean that it will look at larger details when it's calculating the convexity and smaller numbers means it'll only be looking at smaller details. And what this will give you is it will give you a texture where the convex areas like right here are slightly lighter in the texture and convex areas like right here are darker. So it's basically a way to bake some ambient occlusion into your texture. So I'll just hit OK and then it will ask you for a few other settings. So the normal map software preset, this is very important depending on what software this is going to. So I primarily use 3D code to model for Unity so I will leave it at that and the reason is that 
different softwares calculate normal maps differently. Like for instance, if I was going into Unreal Engine, then in my normal map the green channel would be flipped as opposed to if I made it in Unity. So this is important to pay attention to. Uh, I know that, for example, 3ds Max and Unity are pretty much identical and that uh, I believe Maya 2013 Plus and Unreal Engine are also very similar. But just be aware of what software you're going to. So this is going to Unity, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And then this is if you want to subdivide your mesh. I do not. And this will also give you a preview of the number of triangles you'll get. Most of these you don't have to worry about. The only one that I tend to change is the texture width and height. So that just depends on if you want to use a 1024 map or a 2K map or a 4K map. Now, if you're using the trial version or the non-commercial version of 3D Coat, you will not be able to pick 496, 8192, or 163084. You'll only be you'll be limited to a maximum size of 2048. So let's just do that, 2048 and hit OK. And now 3D Coat will begin calculating. You just have to give it a second, it usually doesn't take too terribly long. Alright, that may not seem like anything happened at first, but what's been created is what's known as a paint object. So if we go to the paint room, you'll see that some the model looks a little weird. It's got all these sort of jagged edges and some parts are darker and what's going on? Well what's happening is that we have the low resolution mesh as a paint object but we can still see the high resolution voxel object. So typically once you go into the paint room you want to go to your vox tree and just click the eye on the root. That will hide all of your voxel objects. And you see this is now our low resolution object. If you hit W you can see the wireframe and as you see, the normals and the local occlusion baked very nicely. And there are no visible texture seams. When you're in the paint room, you can go to the texture editor window. And you can see in my color map, this is what that bake local occlusion did. Is that it made some areas lighter and some areas darker. And if we change here to normals, then you can see there's our normal map. But now that your normal map has been baked, you have your local occlusion, and you have your paint object, you are now ready for the paint room, which I will discuss in the next several videos.